If you had to lose one finger, which finger is the least important? Well, losing your thumb means you won't be able to grasp anything anymore. If you choose your pointer finger, that finger controls precision, so you don't want to choose that one. Your middle finger is responsible for grip strength and balance. The ring finger helps with coordination. Your pinky finger, well, it contributes the least to your overall hand function. It does help you grip, but its loss would be the least disruptive. Subscribe. There's a creature that has a 95% kill rate, and it's not the lion whose success rate is just 25 to 30%, but actually, it's the dragonfly. And the reason is, it can lock onto multiple moving targets at once, kind of like a guided missile. And it does that without moving his head, because each of its compound eyes contain almost 30,000 lens, so it has a 360-degree panoramic vision. But it's not just that. Instead of a blind chase, the dragonfly triangulates the prey's escape path. Similar to how fighter jets use target leading to intercept moving objects, and on top of that, the dragonfly can move sharply in any direction, forward, sideways, up, down, even backwards, all without losing speed, because it has four wings that can desynchronize and move independently. And actually, it tilts, pivots, and hovers in midair much better than a helicopter. No other predator on land, sea, or air consistently matches its 95% hunting success rate. Elephant feet are softer than your best sneakers. Most people think elephant feet are super hard with calluses since elephants are super heavy, right? But actually, the pads on an elephant's feet are very fatty and soft. And that's why it can detect vibrations from six miles away. Basically, it's like sensing footsteps across an entire city. And it can do that because the nerves on his feet are 10 times more sensitive than yours. When it stomps on the ground, it produces seismic signals and vibrations that other elephants can detect with their feet. Lion versus crocodile, guess who wins? While crocs can bite at 3,700 PSI, that's enough pressure to crush a bowling ball. Its skin is five times tougher than a lion's hide and up to 15 times tougher than your own skin. Crocs also do the death roll, where it spins rapidly like a washing machine. But the thing is, the lion cannot run a croc on land. The fastest croc can run up to 70 miles an hour on land, whereas the fastest lion can run up to 50 miles. But if the croc catches the lion in water, it has a 70% success rate. Lion versus leopard, guess who wins? Well, the leopard can carry up a tree, prey that's twice his body weight. That's like you carrying one full-size refrigerator vertically up a tree. Lions can climb trees too, but they're much heavier and clumsier. But when it comes to bite power, the lion can bite at 1,000 PSI, which is more than twice the leopard's jaw force. Leopards don't hunt or fight in groups, but even if three to four leopards were to hypothetically team up against a lion, they'd still lose. Crocodile versus elephant, guess who wins? The crocodile has incredible bite power. If it grabs the elephant's trunk, that could be catastrophic, but the elephant has powerful legs. Its force is like a small car collision, so it can crush the croc and get away. That's why in the animal kingdom, they're both smart enough to avoid direct confrontation. Chocolate is deadly for your dog. Just four bites can speed up your dog's heart rate to over 200 BPM, which is almost twice its resting heart rate. Within an hour, your dog may get tremors, seizures, even heart failure. The reason is chocolate contains caffeine and theobromine. When you eat chocolate, you can digest it easily and it's not toxic for you. But your dog digests these chemicals eight times slower. And that's why these substances remain inside his system in high concentration for a longer time. If your cat eats chocolate, that could be his last snack. Even half an ounce, basically two bites, can be dangerous. The difference between you and your cat is that you can metabolize theobromine pretty fast, but your cat metabolizes it 20 times slower, so it remains in his system in higher concentration. And that's why his heart rate will spike uncontrollably. He's gonna start having seizures, and it can be fatal within a few hours. Can you accidentally kill someone by incorrectly operating an automated defibrillator or AED? Well, when you attach it to a person in need, the device analyzes the person's heart rhythm. If the heart's beating normally, the device won't shock him. But if the device detects life-threatening irregular rhythm, then it's going to deliver an electric shock. Most AEDs can deliver three to five shocks on a full battery charge. Modern ones also have voice instructions. So all you have to do is just follow directions. A defibrillator delivers an electric shock faster than a blink. And it does that to reset a failing heart. The AED analyzes heart rhythm over 200 times per second. If you don't know how to operate one, the good news is 
Most modern ones will guide you with voice instruction, and some even give feedback on your CPR by measuring chest compression depth. Most AEDs can deliver 3 to 5 shocks on a full battery charge. If your shoulder belt sits too low, it can't restrain you effectively during a crash. But if it sits too high, then it can press against your neck and increase your chance of neck injury. The optimal height is when it rests near your collarbone because then it can distribute the force across your chest rather than your neck or abdomen. Drive safe. If you fall into a tunnel that goes to the other side of the earth, it's going to take you 38 minutes to reach the other side. Let's say the tunnel is vacuum sealed and we can just ignore extreme temperatures, pressure, oxygen levels, air resistance, all that. Well, the fun part is what gravity is going to do to you. Because when you jump in initially, you're going to accelerate faster and faster as gravity pulls you towards the center of the Earth. By the time you reach the center, it's zero gravity for a short moment, meaning you're instantly weightless. But remember, you're still in motion, so after you pass the core, gravity starts to pull you back and slow down your momentum. So by the time you reach the tunnel exit, you're at zero velocity. And unless you exit the tunnel, you're going to fall back in, and the process repeats itself. The Earth's diameter is a bit more than 7,900 miles whereas the deepest man-made hole is just 7.6 miles deep. And it took 20 years to drill that, kind of like growing a kid. But they didn't finish going through the crust. They had to stop 50 miles before they reached the mantle. And the reason is the scorching heat. The temperature at that depth reached over 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So you got equipment and drill bits melting. Another problem was the pressure. It's 4,000 times what we see at sea level. And the rock at that depth is really porous and permeable. So basically, it's like drilling through plastic. If your tooth gets knocked out, you have about 30 minutes to get to the dentist to get it reattached. If you're fortunate, you might have up to an hour, but no more. Every minute counts. So first you want to pick up the tooth, but grab it by the crown. You don't want to touch the root because that can damage the cells that are needed for reattachment. So then you want to rinse the tooth gently in milk or a saline solution, but don't rinse it in tap water. Next, you want to gently insert the tooth back into your socket if you can, but if you can't reinsert it, keep the tooth in a container of milk. Either way, you're going to want to rush and see your dentist. Let's say your finger gets severed by accident. Generally speaking, you have about 12 hours to get it reattached and timing is critical. If it's relatively a clean cut and that finger isn't too damaged or shattered and if you have ice nearby, you might be able to extend that time window to 24 hours. First, you want to gently rinse the finger with clean water to remove dirt and debris, but don't use soap. Certainly don't scrub it. Do you want to wrap the finger in a clean, damp cloth and then place it inside a Ziploc bag or something that's airtight? and then put that bag on ice. You don't want to put the finger directly on ice because that's going to cause tissue death. A surgeon will reconnect the tiny blood vessels and nerves. And if the doctor's super meticulous and precise, your finger can be restored to pretty much its normal function. If you took every nerve in your body and stretched them out end to end, most people get six feet like your height, maybe 10 if they're bold. But actually, if you're on Staten Island and your friend pulls out all your nerves, he'd end up in the Bronx. We're talking 45 miles. A doctor will give you eye drops to numb your eye. Then a laser will make a tiny cut like two to three millimeters at the edge of the cornea. And a circular opening is made in the lens capsule. So then they'll grab an ultrasonic device. And what it does is it breaks up the cloudy lens into tiny fragments. So then the pieces get suctioned out of your eye. And then an artificial lens gets put instead. And the amazing thing is, as intricate as the entire thing is, the procedure only takes 15 to 30 minutes. The eye is self-healing, so in most cases, you don't need stitches. If you took one cup of sugar and you put it into one cup of water, some people think your total volume will be two cups, but actually, you can't add the two volumes together because sugar dissolves in water. And when it does, the molecules fit into the space between the water molecules. We're talking about efficient packing here. So in reality, you only get about 1.7 cups of sweet water. Most people think if you run in the rain rather than walk, you'll get more wet. But actually, you'll be 40% less wet if you run. That's assuming the rain is falling vertically down or if the wind is blowing the rain toward you. But if the wind is blowing from behind you, then whether or not you're running at the speed of the wind impacts how wet you'll get compared to if you just walked. They also say the body shape has an impact, but at that point, you're really overthinking it. In one second, a fire ant can sting you three times, while an average person can type five keystrokes. A Morse code operator taps nine keys on a telegraph, while a gamer can do 10 mouse clicks. A drummer can hit 15 beats, but in the meantime, the woodpecker pecks 12 times a second. A jackhammer does 30 hits and a rattlesnake it can shake its tail 60 times a second. Trained pilots can reach 9G. 9G means your body feels nine times heavier. So if you weigh 150 pounds, it'll feel like you weigh 1,350 pounds. And what happens is 
blood gets forced away from your brain. With less blood flow to your retina, you lose peripheral vision and you get tunnel vision instead. Trained pilots can withstand 9G for 15 to 30 seconds, but beyond that, they get G-lock, which is when blood pressure gets so low you black out and you lose consciousness. Let's say you have a spoon and dining table both in the same room, meaning they're both at room temperature, right? So why does the spoon feel colder? The thing is, when you touch the table, wood is a poor conductor, meaning it doesn't draw heat away from you so much. Whereas when you touch the spoon, the metal immediately starts drawing heat away from your skin, and that's why you perceive it to feel colder. Thing is, most people think their fingers can sense general temperature of an object, kind of like a thermostat, but actually, the sensors in your finger just measure how fast heat is exchanged 